So you have two options here. You could take this as y and substitute it in for y, which is a good way because this has a denominator of 8. If this was a denominator of like 5, I wouldn't probably do it that way. Okay? So there's your substitution again because this 8 cancels that one. This way is fine to do. And then negative 7x and 7x cancel. So really what we're left with is that. And so what do we say for that? No solution. No solution. But let's, let's, since it's quick, let's quickly do the other version of this. And if, actually I think I'm just going to copy this whole page and do it again. If you were somebody who got rid of that fraction, then 8y, right, or just multiply across. So this becomes 8y and negative uh, 7x and 32. Okay, so I, because I rearranged some stuff, it wouldn't. Are you talking about this? Why is this not positive? Because after you multiply, you have to subtract the two other sides. Yeah, so actually that should be negative. So I, I probably shouldn't do that, but let's write it out. If I want this x over here, so this becomes negative 7x plus 8y equals 32. So that actually is positive. Okay. Uh, anyway. So here, if we subtract, both of these go away. So, not good. Either way, how'd that go for you today with the fractions in a system? Sorry, I keep having something in my eye. It's not good. Now, what would that be? 32, 6, so 26. How'd the number, page number 7 and 10 go? How'd these go? I'm <laughs> seeing thumbs all over the place today. Well, let's check it, and then we can come back and ask questions about it. So, here's that. Do what? Well, it's okay to say stuff. Okay, here's a note. I want everybody to look here, please. When you're doing intervals, there's only one interval that references y values, and it's what? Like, the only, there's only one that you put y values in the interval. All the other ones are x values. So which one uses y values? The range, okay? The range. So all of these are going to show x values where things are increasing or decreasing. So go ahead and check them. Remember we skipped number two and number four. Here's the next set. We did seven together, so just check eight. Okay. Any questions on any of them? Now that you have, have answers, how did they go? Uh, add? Yeah, 
Yeah, it should be 0.5, so roughly. So change number 8 to negative 0.5 on both. Did that help? Did that change anything? <laughs> okay. Because these are often, these are the ones that students struggle with, the ones, the intervals of increase and decrease. So ask questions. What can we do to help fix this? You what? Oh. Opposite in which way? Like, like let's just pick I put, like, this one. I, like, I put the 1.5 and the light on the G. Okay. Okay. Maybe, I guess, remember to always read left to right? That, that seems like a reason you might have it opposite. If you read left to right, it might help. Um, I don't know. I guess you could even go as far as draw a little guy on me. You know, like, just start with drawing your guy and know that he's going to the right. So he's uphill, downhill. But do you think that might help? Okay. I mean, do that. The goal is to, to be able to do this accurately, so whatever helps. Any other comments or questions on increase and decrease? Okay. All right, let's, I want to do this. Just to check this with you. This is a not in your packet, so we're just going to have one that I draw. So on, on this page or on some just random scratch paper, please give this a shot. Not worrying about it drawn to scale or anything. Uh, we will see functions that look like this when we get to our polynomials unit, which will be probably around October, November, somewhere in there. And this would be like a quartic, so a fourth power, maybe a sixth power equation. Okay, so here's what I want from you. Domain, range, and intervals of increase, intervals of decrease. So we'll just do those for now. What's the domain for this one? Domain. Left to right. Yep. All, well, I think I heard... All real numbers, did I hear that or something else? Okay. So negative infinity to infinity. How about range? Yep. From negative seven, it does touch negative seven, so use a bracket, negative seven to infinity. Intervals of increase. Well, how many are though are there of those? Yeah, one and then two. So One and two. So intervals of increase, roughly starting at five, maybe. So five to negative four, negative five. Negative five to negative four. Union, remember our union symbol? So that says or, meaning this interval or this one. Um, let's call it zero to infinity. Again, remember, these are x values going in here, not y values. Okay, intervals of decrease. How about those? One, two. Good. So negative infinity to negative five, or negative four to zero. And so you should be able to, on a continuous function like this, continuous meaning that it, we don't have to lift our pencil to continue drawing the function. It goes deeper than that, but for this class that's what we're going to describe it as. 
For a continuous function, you should be able to match these intervals all together into a line. So negative infinity and then to negative 5, then we jump up here, negative 5 to negative 4, then we jump down here to decreasing, then back up to increasing. So it's kind of just, just almost like what our graph looks like, okay? How'd that go? Let's look at page 10 real quick. Yeah. Is this page 10? Yeah, that's Okay. So what are the coordinates of the point where f of x has an that's absolute... Not page 10. Oh. <laughs> Which page? I don't want to have to scroll a bunch. Do I need to go back or forward? That one? Yeah. Thank you. Okay. What is the domain of this function? Guys, this, by the way, is called a piecewise function. Linear, possibly quadratic, or perhaps um, like a semicircle, and then linear, linear. So it's piecewise. I told you we were going to do that this unit, but we actually decided as a math group to postpone it. That's okay, though. We're not writing functions to describe that. We're just analyzing the key feature. Okay? So what is the domain of it? Yeah, we start over here, negative 7, and then to 5, both with brackets. How about range? Remember, now we're reading bottom up. Negative 1, scanning, scanning, we lose the function at 3, both with a bracket. Okay? Down here, domain. What is the domain of this one? Again, domain left to right, so 0 to 18. Range, reading bottom up. Where do we start getting function? Okay. How did those go? How did those go? Okay. All right, flip the page to the one I was on a second ago. Yesterday we talked about absolute max versus local max, absolute min versus local min. Where, what are the coordinates of the absolute maximum on here? Notice, by the way, this time it's saying what are the coordinates. So it's telling you specifically what to write. And there are three, three. How do we know that's the absolute maximum? Yeah, it's the highest point on there. What, it doesn't ask this. But what are the coordinates of a local maximum? Zero, two. He's saying zero, two. Do you guys agree? Yeah, yeah. Remember, locals are on little bumps and hilltops, right? So maybe add that just so you have a reference. Local max, <laughs> zero, two. Okay? What are the coordinates of the absolute minimum? Here. Yeah, we have two, right? Negative seven, negative one, and five, negative one. Okay, how about the local minimum? Do we have any local minimum? Minima? Right here, two zero. That's a local minimum, okay? How about this other negative two zero? Is it one? Yeah. Does the function change from increasing to decreasing or vice versa there? For a minimum, notice it has to change from decreasing to increasing, otherwise it's not a minimum. This one's still increasing, it just changes how it does that, right? Okay. Alright, so we're just kind of quickly reviewing some of the other features. How are how do you feel about these maxes and mins? Are they okay? Overall? Okay. Um all right. Is this one this is the next page, right? 
is f of x continuous? Does it have any breaks in its line? For this class again, we're going to just kind of keep it simple. Do you ever have to lift your pencil to draw this? No. So is it continuous? Yes. Yes. Okay. What would a discontinuous function look like? The dotted line. Uh, well, that would be like the extreme version. Yeah. Uh, is there any on here? Okay. So I'll just sketch one real quick. Uh, you see these fairly often. Let's say we have a piecewise quadratic with an open circle. And then we pick up here with a linear, maybe down to there. And then we have a constant function. Okay? So pieces, right? Piecewise pieces of a function. Well, we have to break our pencil, like lift our pencil. By the way, that's supposed to be a closed circle. It looks like I filled it in, which was not intentional. That should be an open circle, rather. Anyway, we have to lift our pencil to start drawing the next piece. So that would be a discontinuous one. There are discontinuities in various places. Um, it doesn't have, we'll, we'll see some like this in our class. We'll also see some where we have what's called a hole. So we might have something like the rational function, but that little point doesn't work. So tell me about that. Would that be a continuous function? No, <clears throat> because that little point is a hole. It's not on the graph, and that will happen when we get to our rational. So it's important to know the difference, discontinuous versus continuous. Uh, and again, in terms of our class, we're going to keep it simple and say, if you have to lift your pencil to draw it, it's discontinuous. All right, guys, here's where we're headed, and this is where I want you to be able to, to be by the end of class today. This is page 14 in your packet. So can you take a look at it? That's a piecewise graph, but it is continuous. So you're going to need to be able to do stuff like what's on this page for your assessment. And we're not super far from that. Like probably we might get there by the end of next week. There's a chance. Um, but what do these kind of things mean? Like f of negative 1. How do you, what does that mean on a graph like this? We've talked about that. We have notes on it. Yeah, so remember this is evaluating a function at a point. So f of negative 1 means what is the, here in fact write this on your note or on your paper. What is the y value at x equals negative 1? That's what that question is really asking. Okay? You're going to have to interpret that. Uh, you do get a note card, so I suppose you could write this out, like what is the y value at x equals whatever is given. Uh, but you do need to be able to interpret that. Now look at number four. How is it different? Okay. It tells us the y value. So on there, I want you to say this is a y value. And the question says, what is the x value? when y is 3. Okay, I want you to take a quick look at both of those and make sure they're locked in. Do you see the difference? So on an assessment, you'll be able to tell, am I asking for an x or am I asking for a y? Okay? Somewhere, if you need to, remind yourself that f of x is y. Right? It's the same thing. f of x is a y value. Okay? Moving on, let's see. Minimums, maximums, those should be okay. 
continuous. Uh, what does this mean? On what interval is f of x constant? What do you suppose that means? Well, underneath that, this is zero slope. In other words, it's horizontal. The, the y value isn't changing. y value is the same. Uh, quick, what value, for what values is our function, what does that little symbol mean? We reviewed it a while back. I'm looking at 14. So that means less than or equal to zero, right? So what again is D of T referencing? This one, um, graph of F, oh, so those don't match. Here's what you need to do. Make that F of X. But it means the same, just have the wrong function name. So F of X less than or equal to zero. The same thing happens on 12. Okay, thank you. On 12, go change 12 also. What are those really asking you? What is f of x again? What does it represent? Y. So where, in plain English, here's what those are asking. Where are y values above what? What is zero on our graph? Well, that's one point, but the what? Yep, above the x-axis. Everybody see what that, what that means? Where is the function greater than zero? Where is y greater than zero? Where does that happen? Let's just do that one. Where is this whole function, f, above the x-axis? Okay, but we need an interval. Where does it start? Starts here. Do you agree that that point is above the x-axis? Okay. It goes to there. Then it quits being above the x-axis. So we would report 1, 2, 3, 4, so negative 4 to negative 1. Right? Let's go write that down. What are we on this axis? Okay, good question. So let's negative 4 to negative 1 is where it's positive or above the x-axis. <clears throat> so Lillian asked, what if it's on the x-axis? Well, this says not equal to zero, but everything above it, right? So can we include points on the x-axis in here? No, because it says strictly above. How about over here? Yeah. Okay, so that's saying below the x-axis or perhaps on it. So that would be there, still below, still below, touching, still below. So we would include the rest of it in that one. Go ahead and write that in. Really, we want the x values, so try not to read it as y values. That, that whole pink strip there is where it's below or touching the x-axis. So what's that interval? Parentheses, negative 1 to 3. Okay? All right, I'm going to give you this advice with, with some just caution to it. If you're ever in doubt, use parentheses. Now, that doesn't mean you're just going to like ignore everything we learned about brackets and never use them, okay? Because I will expect you to use brackets. But if you're, like any of these increasing, decreasing, above, below, any of those, if you're ever in doubt, just use a parenthesis. Because most of the time that's what you like, 
way, way less than that. Okay? Uh, domains and ranges is where you'll see the brackets one. So let me ask you before we're, we move on. We have not just in your notes listed out a description of each key feature. Do you feel like that would be helpful? Okay. And that won't take super long if you... So grab these notes. I think this is probably a good idea since we do use it a lot. You guys know what the root word of functions is, right? Fun. Fun. Good job, Oma. <laughs> Um, I guess I'll put them on in a typical order. Sometimes they are asked in a different order, but typically you start with domain. Okay, so what we're going to write is a quick definition and then strategies for it. Domain is all x, I'm just writing the same thing, but with a dot, all x values, the function uses. Please underline uses, because if it's not using it, then it doesn't get included in the domain. Okay, so give x values, and then left, here's the big idea, left to right, in an interval. Okay. Range. All y values the function produces. Underline produces. If it's not spitting out a y value, don't include it in the range. What's wrong, Charlie? Did I write something weird? Uh, so give x value left to right. Just an interval? In an interval. Yeah. Okay, same idea. Give y value. But this time, <clears throat> we're going to say bottom to top in an interval. So we're reading from bottom up. We do have notes on intervals, so if you need to go back and read them, they're there, or put them on your note card. Okay, next, intercepts. We'll squeeze both in here. Your x-intercept will always be given as x comma zero. Whatever x is, comma zero. Let me raise that up. I see people looking. Whoa, that's too much. Okay. And this is where the function does what? <coughs> yep, has a zero y value or crosses the x axis. I think the zero y value part is more important than graphically, at least in terms of understanding, but. For this, for the, this first assessment, we'll have just graphics or graphs, so it's like for the most part. Next assessment, we'll start solving for that. Okay, 
y-intercept. What are the coordinates of all y-intercepts? Yeah, 0, y. So we're the, this one's a little bit more, I think, a little bit better understood. But where the function, here's graphically crosses the y-axis, but here's the bigger idea. So I'm putting a couple stars. Set x equal to 0 and solve for y. So if I ask you to solve for the y-intercept, set x equal to 0 and solve for y. That's true for every function we put in that packet, and more. It's just that's how you solve for a y-intercept. Okay, a few more. Okay, I should pass. All right, continuing. Actually, let's do max and min next. Four things to describe, so let's do absolute max, the overall highest point. Um, let's just leave it as a point to keep things simple. We learned that that's not the only way you can do this, but I think for this we'll just say that. Um, but you need to say not open circles or infinity, okay? Local max is the highest point in an area, like a bump, corner, etc. Okay. Again, no open circles. I'm going to put the minimum in the next box, otherwise it's going to get too full. You guys doing okay? Yeah. Okay. So this is the overall lowest point. Not open circles or negative infinity. And then we'll just finish off local minimum. Lowest point in an area like valleys or dips, maybe. Just trying to describe words that your eyes would kind of think of when you see these things. Okay, so that should all feel familiar. Then we have two more. Actually, three if we write about continuous. That's short. You guys doing okay? Yeah. So intervals of increase or decrease. So this was the one from homework that was 
maybe a little bit of trouble. I'm going to tell you to use parentheses. on the intervals unless at the end. So if it's an end point with the closed circle, you can use brackets. Otherwise, just use parentheses. Okay. How do we know if it's increasing? Well, maybe first say this. Yep, always read left to right, because otherwise, well, you could still determine positive slope, but I think that's worth saying. <clears throat> okay. Increasing is uphill. Positive slope. Decreasing is just the opposite. Two more things. We'll write about that greater than, uh, let's see, for you, greater than or less than zero, so positive or negative, and then continuous. And that's all. We have one more to write about, but I think I'll save that for Friday. Because we're going to focus on it pretty intensely separately from this. So, integrals. Actually, let's say it the way you'll often hear it. Positive slash negative intervals. Okay, again, <clears throat> use parentheses for your intervals instead of brackets, probably would be safe. Okay. So positive, uh, you'll see, like we did just now, like greater than zero, okay? So do keep, keep in mind that instead of saying positive, it might see or say the inequality version as well. Where y values... Um, on the graph are positive. So where, how would you describe that? You're looking above what? Above the x-axis, yeah. Good. Negative. This would be less than zero. Now, one or one or other of these will have the in, the equality part. It's not like it's always on the less than, like we saw in our example. Okay, you might have it be with the greater than part. So just leave it off for now. So below, let's just shorten this below the x-axis and say negative y values. Okay. Notice how many of these are intervals, right? All but x intercepts and maxima local sorry. <coughs> all but x and y intercepts and max and min. Everything else is intervals. Um, I just thought of something. So let's let everybody finish this and we'll we'll add the continuous, but I want to go add a quick little 
couple words to the range just to keep us from making mistakes. So let's do this last one. Continuous. It's deeper than this for sure. But the general idea, can you draw the graph without lifting your pencil? If you go on to take calculus, you'll learn how to define continuity in a deeper sense, in a more robust way. But this will work for us. So if you're done, find your range note. We're going to go and add just a little short couple words to that. Here's what we're going to add. This is the only interval. Just say the only interval using y values. And I'm saying, please, please read that. Because sometimes students get mixed up and put y values in increasing, decreasing, and positive, negative. And that's not what we do. This is the only one that has Y values in it. Okay? Do you feel like that was helpful? Hopefully. Now make sure you're reading them so they get stuck in your head. Once you're done with this, go back to that page 14 and let's work on that for a bit. Just work through the whole page. All right, I'm going to put it up where you can read as much as I can get on here. So go ahead and check those and then we'll scroll down. And then I'm handing you a sheet for homework. This time I'll set it up to upload. Yeah. 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 Have this group do back here. They didn't do that. They didn't do Okay. Okay, is everybody? 
Okay. You're gonna upload this homework by Friday's class, not tomorrow. Okay. All right. I won't be here tomorrow if you need help, so don't wait. Just wait till Friday. Oh, I think. And I'm gonna make it a upload. So tomorrow doesn't get mad. Yeah. This way. This is an application. Okay. What do we need you to do? It was supposed to not be. Five. B. Long or no? Oh, this go, page 14, how'd it go? I'm like, wow. Sheet that no, so it's just right. It would just be writing, you know. I give my permission for Bailey to have his iPad in band and bass and have a line and ask him if he would sign it. All right, yeah, cool. Thank you. Yep, see ya. So, let's let's go. Because this one is saying f of zero, meaning x is zero, not f of x. So if x is zero, what's the y value? Where is x zero? Mm -hmm. yeah. So what's the y value of the function? Mm -hmm. X is zero on this oh, whole entire y axis. So one. And then for this sign, it would not be a function because you're picking up. So we need to do that for the magic y. Yeah, so he, the, it prints weird. This is not supposed to be. Those two vertical lines are not supposed to be. Okay. It's just for some reason. Why is it a function? Like, show me where you think it fails. So that's an open circle. No, that's not why. It's because this is an open circle. And that's closed. So that actually doesn't exist on the function. So it's only just the one point. So technically it's not. It does have a Yeah. 